Hi, I'm Lake Speed Jr., Total Steel Piston Rings, and welcome back to our video series on Piston Rings 101. Today is my favorite episode, break-in procedure. You can have all the best parts, all machined perfectly, and it can still go wrong just by not getting the break-in process correct. Now, you think about it, we're talking about how the surface finish has to be just right, the geometry has to be just right. Well, break-in or run-in or wear-in or different terms for the same thing, the break-in process is the last part of metal removal. It's how the parts mate together. That last little bit of surface finish makes all the difference in the world. Now, the key thing is to get that piston ring to seal properly against the cylinder wall. And you'll recall this from the video where we discussed gas ports. You have to have cylinder pressure forcing the ring out against the cylinder wall. If you idle the engine and don't drive it hard, it never gets the gas pressure. It never has the load that's required to push against the wall to create the friction that generates the heat that activates the ZDP that helps form that gasket that helps seal everything together. So it's very important to drive the car and have that heat and that load in order to form that gasket. Another thing we've seen, and this is where people go wrong sometimes, is they forget about the fuel tune-up and think, oh, we'll just make it a little bit rich to be safe. The problem is if you run the engine excessively rich, it washes all the oil off the cylinder wall. When you wash the oil off the cylinder wall, now you lost the lubrication, which can wear the ring out, damage the bore, creating more blow-by. So having the right fueling is important. Having loads important. And then the other thing is you need to have the correct lubricant. Friction modified oils, oils that give you fuel economy, synthetics, things like that are not good for ring break-in. It's actually doing its job too well in terms of trying to protect the bore. Remember, the ring needs to bed in. It needs to wear that peaks a little bit to create that flattening effect. The peaks on that hone need to be leveled. And what does it is the ring with the load but remember, the oil is the gasket. And that ZDP film being formed from the oil is part of that gasket that helps those surfaces mate together properly. So you need to use the correct oil, non-friction modified, apply the load that generates the heat that helps the chemical process do its job, and then avoid washing it down by excess fueling. No good. Right fuel trim, right products, right procedure equals correct ring seal. One important consideration when talking about Nicosil is that it is a different metallurgy than traditional gray cast iron. Many, many engines on the planet are made from gray cast iron. And the big difference is gray cast iron is softer than Nicosil. As a result, the surface finish, a Nicosil, needs to be what's called plateaued. Now, you may be thinking, what does that have to do with a plateau? It has to do with cylinder bores. It's not like a mountain. Well, that's exactly what it is. That when you hone a bore, you're creating peaks and valleys. Now, because gray cast iron is soft, during the break-in process, those mountains get plateaued. They come down, it creates the load-bearing area, and it has the valley beneath it to hold the oil to be that gasket. With Nicosil, because of how hard it is, you have to go in and during the honing process, intentionally plateau it. Here's an example of a non-plateaued and a plateaued hone. You can see the difference with your naked eye. Unfortunately, your rings can also feel that difference as well. The rough hone, because of the hardness of Nicosil, 
turns it into a cutting tool, which means not only will blow by be high, but cylinder wear of the ring will be extremely high. So it will damage the ring, not seal properly, and create all kinds of problems. That's why it's so important to have the correct surface finish, the correct plateau hone, specifically for Nicosil, because it's not a gray cast iron bore, so the surface finish must match the needs of the metallurgy. Hope you all have enjoyed watching this series of videos. Please let us know if you have any questions. We'd love to help. Thanks for watching.